Hello guys, and I thought I'd bring you along to this prototyping video. We're gonna build the 737 glare wing. Now this has been in production for months, but it just hasn't been good enough. And I'm hoping this is gonna be a much simpler way. You can see that we've got the first two sections printed. I put them on the Patreon group earlier and they look fantastic. They've, they've come out really well. There's no support required, and I think that's what makes the big change. We've gone from a one and a half day print to a six hour print. Now, of course, I'm using Bamboo Labs, the X1, away from the CR10. These are designed to be smaller to fit the smaller Ender 3 beds, because I didn't want to go through producing a SPM small printer mod afterwards. That all said, let's put this to one side. We've got the center support that all the parts attach to. And these need to be joined. And let's see what we can do. Oh, that goes in nice. Might have to put it a bit straighter though. There we go. I've got a temperature set to around 450 degrees, which is actually quite hot. There we go. That's why they're going in so quickly. That goes like that. We would flip it over and those two larger holes require two more inserts. Now I have to be honest, there's a lot of brass inserts. That's an M3, that's no good. There are a lot of brass inserts in this unit. in the smaller piece and repeat. Okay. Well, that was a fail. I wanted to see how strong it was. And there's a weak point here. Right, so that's gonna need a higher infill. Okay, we'll continue. We can bring in the first part of the base. And let me see if I get this right. I think that slides in there. So you have to put the first part, because the way it's angled, you definitely have to feed it in from the bottom first and then it auto aligns itself, just like that. You can't push it any further because it meets the corner here. We're gonna, now I think these were eight millimeter screws that were required. Now, actually, when I was designing this, putting these screws in at all these awkward angles was the biggest pain of this design. But I can see that this is gonna work quite well. There's the first section on the center support. Feels quite solid. Let's bring in the other side. That should fit. Oh, beautiful. In the meantime, let's get some more screws in. And that's it, rock solid. Quite pleased with how that's looking already. I mean, it really is solid. Uh, I actually removed some extra screws. I put a lot more screws in this and I thought, that's just too many. I'm gonna go away and see if I can make this part a bit stronger because that's completely useless right now. I'll be back when the other two are done. Catch you in a little while. And we're back guys. I've been away, I've printed all this to the side here so we should be able to finish this now in one go. I've also replaced this forward support. It's now in red. And what I learned was the actual filament that I used was completely useless. It's split in every direction as you can see there. It was just 
bad filament. So I'm going to stick with that design. It does feel quite secure. Let's get some more bits on, and the more we get on, the stronger it's going to get anyway. So, I think the white is on next, and it just slides on like that. So I've just got to put a few screws in from the front here, which is actually the underneath. So I noticed the first error when I was printing this, as it printed, there was no screw hole. I've actually corrected that in the design, so the next version should be sorted. Let's get a screw in the side here. There we go. We've got two in the top. So we need some longer screws for the top here. Oh, there we go. 12s are perfect. Got the grey. Well, that fitted nicely. Yeah, no problem with the longer screws. Good. So now the awkward part, we actually have got some screws on the inside to hold these sections together. It's feeling quite firm already. So I'm grabbing the camera here and hopefully you can see the screw head just inside there. And that's the nut in fact. And there you go, so just inside there, look, you can see the two screws that I've put in. And can you see them on, there's the nuts on the back. And that has made it absolutely rigid. I'm not even gonna bother putting the screws in the other holes. I might even delete them. So we've got two more screws to go in here. I'm also using flange nuts to help spread the load on the PLA. Now there's no way of showing you what's inside here with, with what I'm doing. I, can even, I can't even see myself. But there is plenty of access to get your fingers in there, he says. So far, so good. It is rock solid and it's actually quite light. Light but solid. I'm quite pleased with that so far. However, we've still got a lot more sections to go. I've got a feeling now it's brass insert time. So I'll just turn the soldering iron on. These are our front sections. Yes, two there, two there. At least they fit together nicely. We've got our two parts. Now there's nothing captive about this attaching these two parts. They are just all screws. Uh, nuts and bolts, sorry. Here we go. Now even with all these studio lights, seeing black screws in a black body is, is really hard. You've got no chance of seeing it on camera. That's it at almost full height. We have got the base adapters to go on here and they just help secure it to the MIP panel behind. You can see that we've got loads of lightning holes all the way through. So regardless of what cables we use, we can get through every direction. Now that should make wiring a lot easier. I also intend to fit the panel at the front here if we can get it in, I'm not too sure and underneath we can fit our LED strip in here and we've got the wire access holes at either end. Let's get the base adapters fitted. Once more we're going to need some heat inserts. Now I can see already these are pre-mod and these were the days these have been designed for a long time and they were designed before I used heat inserts. so the gap in there is actually quite small so we're going to have to try and force them in there These two parts should go together. There we go. And I believe that's that now ready to be attached to the back. Now these plates, they mount the base of the MCP shelf all the way across. On the real aircraft, they're about three millimeters. I've had to double it to six millimeters to be able to take the weight. Now these base adapters, 
They've just got some M8 bolts that go through the surface, like so. Got a, a nut on an extension because it is quite deep. Is that going to bite? Yes, it is. And there we have our multicolored <laughs> glare wing. Now it is quite big, but it is quite solid. As you can see, I can hold it quite firmly from the back. And the whole reason of this base adapter is that it takes the weight of the unit on top of the MIP frame. We've got various bolt holes here that we can bolt into the wooden structure. And then we've got some M4 screws just at the base here to stop it from moving up or down. That's the plan. I've got one more bit to finish. Is I might take it outside now, spray it black so it looks a little bit better when we put it on the MIP. And here we have it fully painted, almost ready to go, to be fitted to the MIP for its test fit. While it's been away drying, I have made a few modifications to it to make things a little bit different. So definitely another reprint required. But anyway, this was just fast prototyping speed. The first thing I forgot was the fillet that goes on the side here. So rather than print a whole brand new bottom section, what I've done, where is it? There it is. I've created this guide here. That's hopefully gonna sit on the exact position we need. And then I can just drill those three holes in the right place. That's the idea. Now this is going to go roughly there. And there's our fillet piece done. I think that as the general design is done, I am going to put it down again and now bring in the MIP because we've got to fit this to that. Now, because this part has been invented after the design of the MIP backboard and the frame, we need to drill some holes. And again, I've created some very specific drill guides because I don't want to mess these up. And they are hopefully gonna slide into position like that. And we can just drill the holes in the exact position. Now we get to see how accurate these are. I guess there's only one thing for it, and let's see how it fits. Even with just one screw, it's strong enough to hold it all up. This is gonna be awesome. Don't know why I'm using a, uh, a screwdriver when I've got a, an impact drill. There we go. If I tilt this back slightly, there we go. It's gonna support the monitor from behind, but it is absolutely rigid. For a 3D printed unit, that's pretty cool. We've got complete access to the top, which means we put all our wiring in we can even put wiring in through the sides into the MCP area, but of course we've got this big open access area that we can put all our wiring into here. Because this unit's not gonna have the windows, it might actually be a good idea to put all the, uh, the Arduinos in the, shout in the top because it's gonna be really easy to access directly from the top. It's all gonna be hidden, which means if, if you guys aren't that good with cable management, it can be hidden and it can look quite good as a self-contained unit. I haven't really thought about where the wiring's going yet, but that's looking like a promising place. The curves, I've got to admit that I do love the curves. We've got the inbuilt lighting recess, which means it's gonna light up the whole panel from the upper side. It's gonna look pretty cool when we've got the whole of the black top on and hopefully the black side here. Until next time guys, I'm off to do a bit more design work. I'll catch you later.